Good afternoon and welcome to this important video. Important because we're going to talk about a topic that you probably haven't seen since Statistics 101, which is how to estimate the uh, frequency of a certain characteristic of a population from a sample. So why is that important and why is that maybe not as simple as you might have uh, learned back in college? So in Statistics 101, you do it in the very simple case where you get introduced to samples and, and uh, populations and means and all that kind of stuff. You take a representative sample of your population, you measure something or you ask people for their opinion on something, and then uh, you can infer or estimate the uh, true population param parameter out of this sample. But this only works if your sample is representative. And if you measure the responses or if the variable you're interested without measurement error. But we're not going to talk about measure, measurement error, we're going to talk about representativeness. This is something that is, I think, in practice impossible to achieve. Um, very often the samples are not representative, or if they are, if somehow they, you know, if, 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 if um, people are forced to um, provide an answer, they might uh, just participate but they might not give an answer so you'll have a lot of missing data so at the end of the day you will be still have problems so I'm going to show you I'm not an expert in this uh, field at all so don't take this what I'm going to show you as, as the truth or as a, some kind of tutorial this video is not a tutorial it's more to get um, a discussion going and also to show you um, how you or introduce the idea of how you could manage this non-representativeness problem. So let's take a look at what I have here. So I have, uh, so I, I will, I think I will write a um, blog post as well, uh, because there's a lot of code that I had to write to get to this, um, and I, it's a bit of a complex code because I simulate data and this kind of stuff. So I think I'll um, write a blog post and then I might link it later on. So if you really want to follow along, you could then go on my blog. But for now, just um, Let's just discuss ideas. So I have a sample where um, I ask people two things. I ask them their age and whether or not they like bingo. Okay, so zero is no and one is yes. Okay, so how did I get this sample? So mm, you could say, well, you know, you just run a, a, Twitter, a Twitter poll and there you have it. The problem with your Twitter poll is that it's not going to be representative. Okay, you're only going to capture opinions of a certain demographic and not of uh, a sample that is representative, meaning a sample that reflects the uh, same characteristics as your population. So, for example, you have as many people, as many men in your sample than in your population, as many elderly people, as many immigrants, as many, I don't know, whatever, in your sample than in your population. So if you do a Twitter poll or an online poll, even if you call people, you probably won't get a representative sample. Because if you call people, well, who has a phone nowadays? Mostly elderly people. So you're going to get the opinions of the elderly, but not of the rest of the population. So I got this sample. I could say, well, you know what? Uh, I have my sample uh, here. Uh, let me take a look at you know the average answer so 35 percent like bingo so is that something that uh, is representative well i don't know i asked them also their age groups why did i do that because i already suspected that i was going to have a representativeness problem and i wanted to check what is the distribution so if i take a look at my sample Let's use the uh, tabil. I think I have it uh, loaded, but if not, I'll have to do it. Yeah. So tabil is a function that is included in the Janitor package, which is um, a very similar function to count from dplyr, but it gives you the frequencies as well. So I have um, four percent of uh, you know people younger than 19 years old, and then I have these other percentages. And very interestingly, I have almost 17 percent of my sample is people 80 plus so I suspect that uh, elderly people like bingo more than the rest of the population and uh, I also suspect that uh, bingo enthusiasts if they get asked um, if they love bingo they will answer 
more often than the rest of the population. If you don't like bingo, or if you don't care about bingo, if someone asks you on the street, stops you on the street to, uh, to ask you to answer to a survey, you probably will not want to waste your time with that. But if you're a bingo enthusiast, then you will answer. So my, I can suspect you know, that my sample is probably not representative. Thankfully, I can compare this, uh, this, uh, these frequencies to the actual real frequencies of my population. And this is because um, National Statistical Institutes run this census every five years or ten years, depends a bit from country to country, to country and they collect this data and they publish it. So I have this, uh, I have this table here and I can now, ah yeah, this is, yeah, so let's, uh, let's add the frequencies. I don't have the frequencies and I need, I need the, um, the frequencies. So let's just add a column, which will be the total of the freq. And let's now, well, it's not really a frequency, but it's called freq. So this is when you run a, when you write a, a lot of, uh, a lot of codes and then you copy and paste and blah, 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 blah. And you get this weird things. So hopefully it's going to work. Yeah. So in my population, I actually only have about 4% of 80 plus people. I have much more younger people than in my sample. Uh, and uh, here I have also a lot of imbalances. So actually uh, this, uh, this younger people are clearly undersampled and the uh, older people, elderly people are clearly oversampled. So my value of 35, maybe let me zoom in a little bit, my value of 35% here, probably totally wrong, okay? I know it's wrong because I simulated the data, so this is all simulated data. So I know it's wrong, I did it on purpose. But uh, let's see, let's see if we can uh, correct that. So how will we correct that? We're going to use uh, a method called post-stratification. So we're going to stratify on the age group. We could stratify on more variables if we add them, on gender, on the, I don't know, uh, socioeconomic status or whatever. Uh, but we're just going to do it on age. And what we're going to do is we're going to compute weights such that when I run this mean here, okay, so this is my mean, okay, when I run this mean instead of giving a weight of one to each observation, which is what the you know, basic mean does, I will give a higher weight to undersampled people and a lower weight to oversampled people, such that uh, people that are underrepresented, their contribution counts more towards the mean than people that are overrepresented. Okay, so this is a way to balance your uh, your mean. So you see, this is already starting to be a bit more complicated uh, because, uh, as I said in statistics 101, you just you know you just stop here. Basically, you compute, you get your your sample, you compute your average and your standard deviation and all that stuff, and you're done. In practice, it's not as simple and. I have another issue that I'm going to show you later on where it's getting it, it gets even more complicated. So to compute this um, to compute these weights, I'm going to use the survey package. And as I said, if you're really interested into the code, um, I will write a blog post on that. Um, but I think we we, we we just want to discuss uh, discuss methods here. So that's why I'm not really focusing too much. But the idea is that I, I um, specify a survey design where I say that I don't have any weights, okay, and I give it my sample, and then using the an algorithm called rake, okay, I get my weights by calibrating in a sense. It's not really calibrating because calibrating is another word that gets used in the survey literature, so I shouldn't use it. But the idea is to calibrate my um, my weights such that. When I when I recompute my frequency table on age, my sample will match my frequencies here will match the uh, my my frequencies in my sample will match the frequencies in my population, and if that happens for my age groups, then I can be assured or more assured that the uh, mean that I will compute, in this case, if people like bingo or not, will also approach the true value. And again, because I simulated the data, we can actually then later on compare the results. So let's let's run this code. So I uh, first of all, I, I, I define here my, my survey design. 
then I enter, so my rake function takes as an input the design, the variable I want to post stratify on, and then the population margin. So these are my frequencies here. Okay, so let's uh, run this. So um, this runs quite fast because it's a small sample, it's only one variable. I have here a message telling me that I didn't supply any weights because you could also, if you already have weights, you can supply weights uh, in this function just to then use them in your com computation. So in this case, I don't have weights and I now have computed them. This is now in my weighted data. Okay, this is now my weighted data. We can actually take a look um, at uh, this. It's a, it's, a, it's a complex object. Okay, it's not a data frame or anything. It's a complex object. Uh, we can also take a look at, if I use the weights function, which is, uh, I think it's in base R, uh, we actually can take a look at the weights and you see that we have weights that go from 14 to 320. Again, I'm not an expert on this, so don't um, take this as a tutorial, but in a lot of tutorials that you can read online, they will tell you to trim the weights, um, because if you have very small weights and very high weights, uh, that's not good either. In this case, uh, I think it's okay. Uh, I, it doesn't seem to be too, uh, you know, too problematic here, but if you have a weight that is, I don't know, around 14 and then another that is 32,000, that's not good because this means that the people that got this weight represent a group that has been so undersampled that maybe there's only one person in that group, in your sample, and that person will get a huge weight to, you know, kind of represent everyone. But the problem is that, well, if you only have one person in your group, then maybe that person is a very weird case that is totally not representative of, of the whole group. So that's why you have to be a bit careful. But in this case, I think it's okay. So now let's uh, just recompute my mean. So this is my mean without weights. Okay, so I just run the mean function on the variable like bingo. And now using a survey mean, um, on my weighted data, I can actually um, get my weighted mean and it's 17%. Let's compare with the truth, okay? So uh, this is the standard error. So you see, first of all, that there's a huge difference. It went from 35 to 17. Uh, and as I said, because I simulated the data, I know the truth, so let's compare. And yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty much, that's very close, much closer than what we had before. And uh, with the standard error, we could actually even compute a confidence interval, which we're going to do later on and see um, if, it's, uh, if it falls or, or if there's a statistical difference between the two, which in, the, in this case, if I remember, there isn't. Now let's imagine uh, a more complex and perhaps even more realistic, well, not with bingo, but with, um, with something else. Um, imagine that I have uh, one sample per week. Okay, so I have one sample per week. So, um, oh, this is with all the variables. Let me just select. Let me just select the, the variables that interest us, namely age group, week, and yes. Uh, okay. Ah, yeah, that's because week here is. Um, ah, that's, I think that's because week is a function of the Lubridate package, but it's also a variable in uh, my uh, data set. So I guess this is, uh, uh, I, maybe if I, I guess this is why I have a problem. So maybe if I just put, no, maybe that's going to work. It's not going to work. Or is yes also a function? No. Mm, anyway, uh, if, if you see, I have, I have weak and yes. So yes now is, do you like bingo? And this, um, I should really show it to you because uh, if I can't show it to you, it's going to be a bit more difficult. Maybe let's ignore the weak variable for now and let's just, um, okay. Now there's a problem, maybe we'd select dplyr. So no applicable manual for, of class function. Ah, ah, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. It's because I'm, it's not sample, which is a function, it's samples which are my samples. So I was trying to select columns in a function, which of course doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, this is a long uh, data set. So that's why, uh, so basically that person got asked um, that, no, that, that, sorry, this is one person, okay, that got asked once 
on the in the first week and that person said no so i have five samples but what's important here is that persons don't get asked more that, than once so people in this sample okay this person here is not this person and is not this person and is not this person and is not this person it's not that we ask the same person five times these are five different people it's just that here you know they are, they are in the same age group something else that is important is that once you say that you like bingo you like bingo your whole time so of course if you replace bingo by for example uh, did you get vaccinated maybe this example makes a little bit more sense if you got vaccinated you only get vaccinated once or at least let's assume you only get vaccinated once um, and if you get vaccinated uh, in the second week of your vaccination campaign you're not going to get vaccinated again on the third or on the fourth week okay so these are different people what i want to show you is um, how this evolves through time first of all so as you can see in a second is that this gets larger and larger so the at, at first we only had 22 people who liked bingo now we have 39 49 56 and 60. so this is because you know as you're asking people and ask you uh, as you are looking at uh, the survey data the government is at the same time running a uh, bingo campaign so they're promoting bingo and people people more and more people are f falling in love with bingo so that's why this proportion is increasing again if you replace liking bingo by being vaccinated maybe it makes a bit more sense people get vaccinated through time so you see this increase the problem is again the same does this represent the true share of people that like bingo well you have the same issue as before not only is now um you know the the um the, the true value also evolving through time the true value in your population is also increasing but you don't know by how much and you you don't know again if you have a problem with your samples here which you you probably have so if we i guess we could take a look um I actually think I had it above. Maybe let me, if we take a look at the age distributions, I think I have it. So this was my code that I wrote to, you know, make this uh, make this work. Let me just take a look. Mean likes bingo, likes bingo, likes bingo. Frequencies through time. Uh, I guess that's that's what I want. Maybe. Oh no. So this is the uh, well. I mean, this this already can be. It's a bit of a spoiler, but this here comes from the main population. So this is the truth, which I simulated, and this is the um, my samples. So you see there's a, pr there's a problem again. So I constantly overestimate the true value. Um, anyway, the, the, the problem is the same, is that I have uh, a sample that is not representative, okay? So now I need to compute weights, but weekly, okay? Every week I need to compute new weights. It's not, it's not just uh, that I just put my sample in there and I get weights for the whole five weeks. I need to compute weeks, weeks. I need to compute weights every week, okay? So that's why I created this function, which, as you see, will take weekly data will compute the weight and uh, the weights using again the marginal population age uh, the the marginal age in the, the this marginal table let's call it like that i think it's better the marginal table which is this one that's again the true value in my population this stays constant of course okay even though more and more people are liking bingo the age structure in my population stays constant so i can just reuse that every week so this is what i'm going to do I'm going to apply this function to uh, my samples and how am i going to do that well let's um let's just take a look at this thing if i sample and then if i group nest okay this is a trick i've been using a lot i will create this uh, list column called data where each element is a data frame so to this element i will now uh, apply map my function compute weights which will uh, create my um so this is this here is going to compute my weights okay and this here is going to compute my mean okay my weighted mean now so i do that in two lines of code okay no loops involved here 
I get all these messages, that's normal because uh, this is just the um, survey design function telling me that uh, I didn't provide any weights, which is normal because I'm going to compute them. And now I, this code here, it's, it's just to um, get a nice data frame with my result. So I won't comment this, it's, it's just some cleaning. So this is my weighted samples. Okay, so um, I get this result, this result, and here the standard error. Okay, and the is colon just say that just tells me where that's from. So this is from the correct sample. So this is now the correct data, um, or rather the reweighted average. Okay, I'm going to bind all this with my data from before. Okay, and my so I'm going to bind that to two things. This is this is my weighted sample. I'm going to add to this the raw, okay, uh, the raw average from my sample, and I'm going to add the true value, which I know because I simulate the data. In practice, of course, you don't know. In practice, you have no, you don't have that. But because I simulate the data, I can compare this result to the truth and to uh, the uh, raw data and let's and I'm going to show a graph and I'm also going to add confidence intervals so let's take a look maybe let me try to make this a little bit larger so we have here uh, on the x-axis five weeks on the y-axis my frequencies so the green curve is the data from the raw sample so you see it's up here the blue is the true value so you see a huge difference between the two Okay, and now there's the red, which is the corrected sample, and I hope you can see it on your screen. Uh, there's like a pinkish uh, area. This is the confidence bands, and you see that my corrected values fall, um, and and my true values, or rather my true values fall within the confidence interval of my corrected values, and uh, I was overestimating how much people liked bingo in my population if I was just looking at my raw data. So this is, um, again, there's a lot of code involved here. I'm going to write a blog post, uh, hopefully this weekend, on this. But the idea is that even though this is something that you've seen in uh, Statistics 101, representativeness is probably uh, never achieved or very difficult to achieve. This is also why you have sometimes a lot of problems with uh, machine learning systems that completely go uh, crazy when they try to predict certain things for, for certain populations. That's because very likely there weren't not enough um, samples from these categories or these groups, age groups or whatever in the samples. Okay, so representativeness is quite important. Um, this is a simple example, but it's a very important example because we are currently computing, uh, you know, uh, how much people are immune, immune to, to COVID, uh, what's uh, the um, seropositivity in the population and all these kind of things. Um, and yeah, I think you, you need to be careful because uh, if you, if depending on who you sample, well, you, you might be over or underestimating it, especially if it's something that evolves through time. Well, you have to compute your, your weights every week or every month that, uh, that you need to do that. So hopefully you found this interesting. Think about those type of things if you're confronted to this problem in the future. And again, if you want to take a look at the code, I will be uh, posting a blog post on it. So uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter as well so you can uh, know about uh, blog post updates. In the meantime, have a great weekend and uh, until the next time.